car racing means the perfect setup of tires and suspension. Plenty of power and the ability to control it. Overdo it though. And you may get left in the dust. Racing driver Patrick Simon says when he's accelerating or braking, he can't do much about the forces affecting his tires. He has to slow down to enter a curve. And that, he says, is the exact point where he can do something. That's where the potential to damage the tires is greatest. If he's going two kilometers an hour too fast, the forces can raise the front tire's temperature, and that can quickly destroy them. What are the forces that affect tires and suspension? Let's look at the physics. When the driver turns to the right, the car's mass want to keep going in a straight line. That creates forces that push the car to the outside of the curve. Then there's the gyroscopic effect. A spinning wheel makes it difficult to change the axis on which the wheel is turning. This makes the front wheels resist steering impulses and affects the whole car's behavior. You have the driver, you have the car, you have the suspension, you have the tire, you have the road. And at the end, so this performance is judged by the driver. So even if you have a very good tire on the, on the car, if the driver doesn't like it, so the tire is not the one you want to have on this, on this vehicle. So then absolutely there, we need to make sure that the tire will operate properly and as the driver likes to have it, to make sure the vehicle responds like the driver wants to get it operating. Whether on the racetrack or the street, a vehicle needs a good, consistent contact surface between the tire and the pavement. Tests enable researchers to quantify this contact under different load situations. Sergei Menster, an engineer with Dunlop, says a normal car tire has less road contact at higher speeds, whereas racing cars are designed to increase downward pressure and road contact at high speeds. People who build cars and tires work hard at making sure that tires and car suspensions fit each other. Dunlop, for instance, uses tomography and high-end simulation software to give its tires the characteristics it needs for a given setup. When the driver turns the steering wheel, it transmits forces not only through the tire to the road, but into the chassis as well. These must be diverted somehow. With the optimum setup of all the different components, the car will feel like it's glued to the road. But when those limits are exceeded and the suspension is pushed beyond its capabilities, physical forces take over and can make the moving vehicle uncontrollable. This is because there's another set of forces that the suspension has to deal with. Surface irregularities create vertical forces that go through the suspension into the moving vehicle. The result is a stew of lateral and longitudinal forces, gyroscopic forces and vertical forces that are constantly changing and shifting, thereby creating extreme stress for the tires and the suspension. When pushed to the limit, the car will remain predictable only if all its components are working together as a unit. And in a race, that's what separates the winners from the also-rans. <laughs>